Lord God, let your spirit minister to us. Oh God, save tonight, heal, deliver, sanctify, set free. Somebody needs to be strengthened and edified through your word. Father, I thank you that your angels are fighting against the enemy on every side. Lord God, by your spirit, we can overcome the devil. Lord God, we give you all the glory tonight. We give you all the honor tonight. We lift you up tonight. We worship you tonight. We adore you tonight. We exalt you tonight. Have your way in this place. And get all the glory, honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of the church, say amen. Clap your hands on to the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Amen. All right. So we are in the book of Judges. We're in the book of Judges, and, and uh, we are going to start Judges chapter 14. And Judges chapter 14. All the folks that are coming in, come on in, and I'll wait on you. We'll just uh, jump right into this here. But Judges chapter 14. Of course, last week, um, we, we kind of finished up the birth of Samson. If you look at Judges 13, verse 24, and 25, if you read that from verse 24 and 25, real quick, Judges chapter 13. And the woman bare a son, and called his name Samson. Mm -hmm. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. Yes. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Ashdod. So, so you see that God did do what he said he would do. Isn't it good to know that if God makes your promise, it's going to come to pass? God makes your promise, no matter how improbable it might seem, no matter how impossible it might look to others. When God says it, it will come to pass. God's word is sure. God's word, you can bank on God's word so much that you can actually have a praise service before you even see it. <laughs> you can start to give God the glory before you even see the manifestation of what he said. Once God speaks it over your life, and that's why you need to have an attitude when God says something that it's already done. It's already done. Don't let the devil talk you out of your blessing, and don't talk yourself out of your blessing either. Some folk, God, God has to do something sometime to shut our mouth. Help us, Lord. Uh, there was a man by the name of Zacharias, and God told him, you're going to have a baby too. In a similar situation, in a similar situation. His wife, Elizabeth, was barren, and the angel Gabriel showed up and said to Zacharias, you're going to have a baby. Your wife is going to have a baby. And Zacharias said, look, um, it's past the time for that now. Uh, th there's no way that's going to happen now. Um, how's that going to happen now? Y'all can read between the lines, brothers and sisters. And uh, amen. Um, Gabriel. Now, normally... In, in the story that we read last week with Manoah and his wife, what did you notice about the angel when, when Manoah asked the angel's name? What did the angel do? Y'all better talk back to me tonight. Spent all that time teaching last week. Y'all better say something to me. What's that? They said it's a secret. Did the angel give up the name? No. The angel said, I'm not. I'm, why are you asking for my name seeing it is a secret? And, and uh, some scholars believe, and I believe, that that's because um, one rabbi says it, says it this way. He says, an angel, by definition, is a function that God wishes to have performed. So sometimes uh, just speaking certain names can have certain effects. Are you all with me right here? So that angel said, it, it's not important for you to get my name. But in the story of Zechariah talking to the angel, the reverse takes place. In that story, mother, what the angel does, it is the angel Gabriel in particular. And the angel Gabriel doesn't wait for Zacharias to ask his name. Because Zacharias was like, you know, when the angel said, you're going to have a baby, Zacharias said, I don't, know, I don't know about all that. I mean, I don't know how that's going to happen. You know, we, we mm -mm, I don't see how that's going to happen. The angel Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. He, he, he put his mouth, he said, I am Gabriel. That stands in the presence of God. So in this instance, the reverse of what we read in Judges is true. The angel actually declares himself. Are y'all with me right here? So you know, if, if that angel is declaring himself that way, there is trouble on the horizon. Because what that angel was saying is, I know you're not doubting me. <laughs> the angel was basically saying, are you trying, you, are you doubting God's word today? 
He said, I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. You're going to have this baby just like I said it. And then Gabriel said, and you, you going to be dumb <laughs> until the baby come. So for nine months, talk back to me, somebody. Don't be like Zechariah now. Talk back to me. For nine months, Zechariah couldn't talk. And why couldn't he talk? Because he, was, he had too much doubt coming out of his mouth. And the angel made sure that his doubt could not cancel the promise of God. Are y'all with me right here? That means sometimes you got to watch what you say because your mouth might be the problem. I can't get no witnesses tonight. Oh, yeah. My mouth has gotten me in more trouble than anything else I got going on. I know y'all won't say nothing. Y'all won't say nothing. Y'all going to try to be Zacharias when you need to be opening your mouth now. Huh? My mouth. Who in here has ever said some stuff you wish you could take back? Who's ever said something and immediately you wish you could take it back? It, it, as soon as it came out your mouth, it's like you stepped out of yourself, looked at yourself, and said, why'd you? What, 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 how, what, thought, what thought process got you to that point where you felt like you could set your mouth like that? That's how we say it. You know, I know you ain't set your mouth to say that. <laughs> what kind of foolishness is that that you're saying? Well, I couldn't help myself. Not if, if you have the Holy Ghost, you can help yourself. Can I just be honest with you? When the Holy Ghost filled people say they couldn't help themselves, it's not true. When Holy Ghost filled people say the devil made me do it, that's a lie. The devil didn't make no Holy Ghost filled person do nothing. You did what you were big enough and bad enough to do. You did it because you wanted to do it. You did it because you were in the flesh. Y'all not talking back to me. You did it because we're just not right. We did it because the Holy Ghost was saying one thing and your flesh was saying something else. And there was a battle between your flesh and the Holy Ghost and your flesh won. I'm teaching in Bible study. The teaching that I'm doing in Bible study on Monday night is designed to get us right. We're trying to get some folk ready to go to heaven. Somebody got to live for Jesus. Our flesh is terrible. Did you know your flesh and your spirit is in a battle? And so sometimes your mouth will get you in trouble and you will say things. I heard a preacher one time says, we talk ourselves into sickness sometimes. He said, listen how we talk. He said, I'm catching a cold. He said, that means that cold was running from you. <laughs> and you chased that cold down, knocked it over the head like you was a caveman. Drug it back to your house and say, take me. Y'all not saying nothing. Watch it now. We still talking about running, talking too much. Cancer runs in. Well, I'm not putting it on my family. The devil is alive. You need to say, no, you need to reverse that and say, cancer is running from my family in the name of Jesus. All cancer, all disease, sickness is running from. Not running in. How's you, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm having a horrible day today. Well, that's going to be self, that's going to take place. What you speak, death and life are in the power. You know that saints don't believe that? We don't believe that. Because if we believe that, we wouldn't say half the foolishness we say. My back is, what do you mean by your back is killing you? How is it killing you? Kill, killing you. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not saying that you can't uh, state some reality. I have a pain that I'm dealing with right now, but I believe that. But what you need to do is temper that, balance that, reverse that with what God's going to do. There's a pain that has come in my back, but I'm believing God for absolute healing from this pain in the name of Jesus. Come on and talk to me, somebody. Your words, amen. How you doing, man? You got some, man, I'm so broke. You know I stay broke, bruh. Stay broke. You stay broke? Well, if you stay broke, broke you will be. Your words have judged you. Me, I'm blessed. All my bills are paid in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. God is supplying all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm walking into debt-free living in the name of Jesus. You say, well, preacher, you don't know the debts I have. Well, I know the debts you have. I've dealt with some of them, dealing with some of them. But God's going to make a way out of no way for me. Number one, you're going to learn the budget. Number two, God is going to give you a blessing. Are y'all with me right here? What you speak then, marriages, they end up in divorce. You know how many times married people talk about, you know what, I'm so sick of this marriage, I'm going to divorce you. Something that, I'm so sick of this marriage, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to divorce you. You know what you need to do is just go, well, why don't we just go ahead and have a divorce then? What you think going to happen? I'm, I'll wait. What you call is what's going to come. What you speak over your children. You just like your no good daddy. You, you, you know, you so stupid. You can't, I mean, what's wrong with you? That's why you so, that's why you're not going to make, you probably not even going to make it to the 12th grade because you so silly. Keep running with those boys, you're going to end up in jail. I heard something this week statistically that uh, somebody was doing some ministry in the jail and they asked, how many of you growing up, your parents told you you're going to end up in prison? And about 90% of them put their hands up. That means all their life they heard, you're going to end up in prison. One day, you're going to end up in prison. One day, you're going to end up in prison. So guess where they ended up? In prison. Are y'all with me right here? I'm saying speak the word of God over your situation to counteract whatever negative spirit you're dealing with. Because I want you all to write this down. Words are the vehicles that spirit travels in. Let me say that again. Words are the vehicles. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all going to let me talk? talk plain tonight can we can we can we just have bible study tonight does anybody want to move to another level in the holy ghost well you're not going to move if you don't change the way you think you're not going to change the way you think amen if you don't put the word in your spirit right you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so let's look at this word listen words are jesus said this to 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 some folks one time he said something and they didn't like what he said he said the flesh profiteth nothing he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Lord, have mercy. So Jesus was saying, when I speak something to you, spirit is being transferred. People love to talk about spiritual transfer. I hug somebody and, and spiritual transfer. I'll tell you what transfers spirits more than hugging somebody. What they speak into your ears will do more to affect you than because they pass by you and touch you on your shoulder. You walk by, touch me on your shoulder, touch my shoulder, and I'll just plead the blood. Watch yourself. If you're some sort of witch and you touch me, something, something else might be coming in your chair. There's angels around me, so you know, you're doing that at your own peril. <laughs> Praise God. You can't really mess with me. Do you know a witch could even mix a potion for me to drink? It wouldn't hurt me. Am I in the book? Mark 60, they shall drink. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. You can't even poison me, even if you wanted to poison me. However, if I sit up and listen to you all day, I could get more poison in my spirit than I could get by you giving me some Pepsi. Can't get no help. Because if I sit and listen to negativity coming from you, I'll end up negative. Who's ever talked to somebody and got depressed? You pick somebody, somebody call you, you were happy. Y'all remember that day? Happy. You got up that day talking about, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. We serve. You went in the, I mean, you went to the job. Victory is mine. Hey, victory is mine. You bust out your best Kojic dance. You did something. It's your apostolic self. Look at you. And then you talk one phone call. Somebody came on. You said, praise him. And they said, Hello. Once you heard that hello as a response to the praise him, you already know <laughs> stuff was going in the wrong direction. Y'all see, I can't, I don't know why I come to Bible study on Monday nights. Because I'm the only one that goes through this stuff. 
I'm, a, I'm the only one that's ever had one of those conversations. They start talking. Hello. Hey, you, praise the Lord. Hello. How you doing? Not good. Lord have mercy. You knew when you saw the phone call because you've been here before. <laughs> Some of y'all are smarter than this. You have been here before. So you already know. You probably should have sent that one to voicemail. I can't get no help here. You probably should have just clicked. You probably just said, you know, this, 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 this is not going to work in this situation. Instead, you answered. After the Holy Ghost said, don't answer, you answered. And by the time you got off the phone 10 minutes later, you were dealing with a spirit of heaviness. Who's ever felt that? Just, just felt like something just came in the room and sat on you. <laughs> and you had to fight for the rest of the day to get that off of your life. You better learn how to reverse that curse real quick. How are you going to reverse words that bring depression? The Bible said put on the garment of, for what? The spirit of. That means you're going to have to bring in words that lift you, amen, to take you out of that depression that that thing tried to put you in. Better put on Brother Matthew singing a song. Put on a worship song. Praise God. Get you some worship music. Amen. Everybody playing their music. Why don't you play some worship music? They playing Cardi B, play Donnie McClurkin. They play Megan Thee Stallion, amen, play C.C. Winans. Reverse the curse. Do something to lift your spirit, praise God, and change your atmosphere. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Your mouth can cause a problem. So the angel had to keep Zacharias dumb for nine months. And at the end of nine months when the baby came, the angel, okay, you can open your mouth now. Zacharias could talk again, praise God. Sometime I'm wondering if the Lord, well... Some things you shouldn't pray out. I'm not going to pray that out loud. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to Judges chapter 14 before I get in trouble. Judges chapter 14. So now, now Samson is born. He is, God's starting to move on him. So now he's developing a touch from God. God is touching him. Read from chapter 14, verse 1. Let's go. And Samson went down to Timnath yes. and saw a woman in Timnath. Samson went down to Timnath. Let me give you some background. Timnath is not. Israeli territory. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Samson left where he was supposed to be and went where he had no business being. Bible study, can you hear me tonight? Are you going to help me teach this thing here tonight? I said he left where he was supposed to be. Supposed to be supposed to be supposed to be left where he was supposed to be and went where he had no business being a lot of time we get in trouble not just with our mouth but sometimes we are over in territory that God didn't call us to be messing around with wave at your name and say what you doing over there? Just wave at us. So what you doing over there? What you, what you doing over there? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What you, sometimes, sometimes there's some trouble over there. Look at your other neighbor because I don't want to cause no trouble because that, that neighbor might think you're picking on them. Look at your other neighbor and say, tell them there's trouble over there. There is trouble over there. Tell your neighbor real loud. Say, there's trouble in Timnath. Watch out for Timnath. you not... You're not supposed, say it like that. You're not supposed to be in Timnath. What do you learn in Bible study tonight? Bad grammar. Praise God. Bad grammar. <laughs> not supposed to be in Timnath. Hey, saying of God, what you, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing over there at that party? Boy, I can't get no help here. Said my, I was invited by my friends. My friends invited me. Sometimes your friends are inviting you to things that will cause you trouble. Oh, Lord. Tell your neighbor, watch out for that invitation. Watch out for that invitation. You know, I'm going to pass the microphone around and have somebody help me teach tonight. That invitation. What you, what you doing over at Timnath? That's a Timnath party. Well, 
it's the family reunion. I'm going to the family reunion. Sometimes you got to stay away from the family reunion. Because not everybody is strong enough to deal with the family reunion. Are y'all with me right here? Sometimes the family reunion, the devil set up that family reunion to destroy you. Are y'all with me? Sometimes you've got to check your strength level. If you know that you are tempted by some things, don't go there. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to win my friends in the bar. Knowing full well you're still struggling with cognac. Knowing full well every time you see a beer, you're affected. Time you see a Bud Light commercial, Bud Wise Er, you get Bud Dumb Er. Talk to me, somebody. Hmm? You know also there are some people you are not strong enough to be around. And if you know there's trouble over there, run. Can, can Pastor tell you the truth? Can I tell you the truth tonight? Do not resist fornication. Oh, Lord, look at y'all. Look at this. Did you hear what I just said? Do not resist fornication. Say, what kind of pastor is this? What's he teaching? No. Flee fornication. The Bible says run from fornication. Don't put yourself in a place to... If there's fornication over there... And you know you got a problem over there? Run for your life. Run. Watch two Usain Bolt videos and get out of there as quick as you can. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. You need, if you were never athletic, become athletic at that moment. Did Look at Joseph. Joseph... The devil trying to tempt Joseph through Potiphar's wife. And you know she looked good. You know she looked good. And that brother every day was trying to save his life. And one day she grabbed him. Huh? I said she grabbed him. You know what that brother did? Left his shirt. <laughs> she held on to him so tight. She said, come on. And he said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> ran out his shirt, <laughs> ran down the road, <laughs> ran out the house, probably ran to the other side of the estate. Let them lie on you. It's better to be lied on and at least you know you were right. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The Bible does not tell you nothing about standing up there and fighting with fornication. I'm just going... I'm going to go as close to this fornication as I can. You know, they said they want to study the Bible. I'm going over to their house, just me and them. We're going to look at the word. You a lying wonder. Only book you're going to be studying is the Songs of Solomon. You know what time it is. We're not going. What we're doing over here. We, the fleet, we, I, are you coming over? No, I'm not coming over. See, see. Boy, I'm getting in trouble today. Sister Marvin, is this, am I too plain tonight? Should I not be this plain? Should I tell, give me permission to be plain, Sister Marvin. Amen. She said, it's good. Glory to God. I can, I'm going to go ahead and just be plain. Yeah. I'm, I'm, can, I, can I meet? It's 12 o'clock. Amen. Can you stop by? I'm really hungry. Could you drop off something to eat? Mm -mm. First of all, you should be asleep. I don't even know why you're answering your phone. 12 o'clock. <laughs> You should be good and sleep. If you see your phone coming on, amen, be like, oh, mm, demons of hell. Oh, no. Let's put that on. That's how you answer that call. Oh, devil, I see you. Oh, Lord, your picture even coming up. Mm -mm. Put you right there. 12 o'clock at night. You got to go. <laughs> you, oh, whew. thank you, G. Get that text, that 1 o'clock text. That 1 o'clock text, you need to snore a little louder at that, whoa, Pull your sheet way up, cover your head, grab your pillow, and go back to bed. Only person you should wake up for at 1 o'clock like that if it's not somebody that you're married to or in your family. Talk to me, somebody. 
is when the Lord wakes you up at one. Now, when the Lord wakes you up at one, don't be trying to go back to sleep. That was God. You know full well. Your eyes are wide open. You thinking about scripture. Get up. <laughs> God's trying to get you to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody else, uh-uh, turn the phone over. That way you can't even see the light. Thank you, Jesus, coming from it. And just be saved. Flee. Do you know that a lot of depression is just caused by sin? Why am I sad? Sin. Why am I depressed? Sin. Why, why am I depressed because of sin? Because sin feels good when you're doing it, but feels terrible when you're done. It feels terrible because there's a disconnect between where you know you're supposed to be. Well, we're doing supposed to a lot tonight. <laughs> Using that supposed to a lot. <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is where I'm operating. Talk to me, somebody. Why? You are in Timnath. You driving on that street where your temptation is? That's Timnath. Say Timnath. You in that place where you know you're going to be weak? That's Timnath. I'm going to help somebody tonight. You ready for this? Do you want this next thing I'm about to tell you? Everything your flesh wants is in Timnath. That's why you're not supposed to go over there. I'm trying to help somebody tonight. The devil is not tempting you with what you don't want. The folks used to testify in church. They get up and testify, so they testify. Back in the day, we had testimony service. You remember that, Elder Solomon? Testimony service was a dangerous time because anything could happen in testimony service. You, do, you don't really know what folk are going to say in testimony service. Sometime testimony service folks you know if they had they were upset at somebody over on row five they'd get praise the lord everybody i just want to mention that everybody ain't saved especially some folks over here i'm not gonna look over there that's how testimony service could go throwing shade over on row five but here's how testimony service could go sometimes sister bonita you way back there that's how testimony service could go sister get up she say praise the lord saints Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise him one more time. Praise God. I'm so grateful to the Lord who is keeping me. You hear me? My God is a keeper. Everybody like, amen. My God kept me from sin. Yes, Lord. Just this past week, test, I mean temptation came my way, but God. I said, but God. I said, but God. And you know, by that time, everybody's shouting. And they say, yeah. Yep, that they, a devil showed up on my doorstep. Oh, yes, he did, children. And I looked through that peephole, and I saw him. And I said, devil, I see you for what you are. I rebuke you. And glory, amen, I shouted. He ran off that front porch. That demon had to flee. Hallelujah, because the Bible said, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Amen. And boy, everybody, by that time, church is pulling up. The organ is going. The drums are moving. And folk bust out their best dance. We're so glad for Sister Susie how she made it. But what Susie didn't tell you was that devil that showed up on her front porch last week was Jimmy, who was ugly. And if Jimmy was the last man on earth, that girl was not about Jimmy. She can't stand Jimmy. Jimmy been, she been telling Jimmy, do not follow me for days. So when she looked through the people and she saw Jimmy, she was like, child, please. Devil is a lie. She just... <laughs> <laughs> she covered the people, said, go away. Get the hint. I don't like you. You're ugly. And you're broke. Oh. But if Robert had showed up. If Robert had stopped by that week. Not Jimmy. Robert. The one she likes. Talk back to me, somebody. The one with the Mercedes. S-Class, Maybach, higher. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That looked like he's off the cover of GQ magazine. That one. If he'd stopped by, testimony service would have been way different. Should have got up and said, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. I need y'all to pray my strength. I'm going through a few struggles right now. 
I need God to help me. See, it's a whole different. Testimony service would be totally different. Are y'all with me? Because if the devil knows you like vanilla, he is not tempting you with chocolate ice cream. And the devil is studying people. He's been doing what he's been doing for thousands of years. He knows exactly. So somebody, I know some folks sitting in here right now saying, Pastor, you're teaching Bible study to these young people. I've, 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 I've passed that. That's not my struggle. That's right. Yeah, that's not your struggle. Your struggle is your anger. So since your struggle is not fornication, the devil knows how to push your buttons and make you angry all the time. So you stay mad. Can't pray because you're mad at everybody. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Another, that, uh, anger is not my, yeah, but yours is unforgiveness. Somebody, they cut you one time, and you see them try you one time, and you cut them off completely. And forgive. The, psh, when I'm preaching on forgiveness that night, you, you're, you're happily distracted. You call, call yourself reading the Bible while I'm teaching on forgiving your brother. You, you're reading a whole other text. I'm in the Psalms right now. The Spirit is leading me over to the Psalms. I don't want to hear nothing about forgiving nobody, especially not him, especially not her. Y'all better hear this preacher tonight. Tim Nath, whatever floats your boat is in Tim Nath. All right, read, read about Tim Nath. So he went down to Tim Nath. And saw a woman in Tim Nath. There we go. He goes down to Tim Nath, and guess what he saw? A woman. Why? Because that's what his flesh wants. Read. Of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, this girl is not Jewish. She is a Philistine, which means she is a part of the enemy's camp. There are laws that God has given through Moses. Don't mess with people that don't worship the God of Abraham. Last week I dealt with that, didn't I? I talked about 2 Corinthians. I talked about be not unequally yoked together with what? Unbelievers. I said something that sounded exclusive because I said if they're not apostolic, you can't, you can't go that route. And some folks received it and some folks didn't receive it. So I'm going to say it again. So whether you receive it or not, it's still true. Because our flesh is in Timnath. Where am I at? Timnath. Looking at what? Philistines. And what are Philistines doing currently? Killing us. You are attempting to connect with something that is trying to kill you. That is draining you like a vampire. That is sucking the anointing and the life out of you. She's a woman. That's what he wants. Whatever you want is in Whatever you like is in Timnath. Whatever you desire is in Timnath. And the devil is always going to present to you what the Bible says a man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And lust, when it conceives, brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. I'm in the book. I'm, I'm talking right. I'm in the Bible. Are y'all with me right here? You can't go over to Timnath. Timnath is dangerous. Tap your neighbor, tell him Timnath is dangerous. So he goes to Timnath. God bless you, Elder Solomon. We up in uh, Judges chapter 14. Praise God. He's in Timnath. He finds a woman. Let's see what happens next. And he came up and told his father and mother and said, Bold. I have seen a woman in Timnath. He comes home and tells his dad and mom, I saw a woman in Timnath. Woo wee. Boy, she fine like red wine. I mean, I saw a woman in Timnath. Mm -hmm. I wish some of y'all would have told your parents that when you was young. <laughs> that would have been the end <laughs> of life as you know it. How, how many in here had parents like that? You, you dare not come home and talk about, I saw somebody there. Here you go. Saw a woman in Timnath. Especially if you know it's somebody you shouldn't bring home. Watch it now. Saw a woman. He said, 
He says to his dad and mom, I saw a woman, Timna. Of the daughters of the Philistines. Of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. I want her for a wife. Get, get her for me. So now he wants his family, because, of course, that was the custom of the day, that parents had to negotiate with parents, and there had to be dowry paid and negotiations for bride price and all that in marriage. So he said, get her to me for a wife. Go get her. I need you to go get her. Notice the response. Keep reading. Then his father and his mother said unto him. His father and mother said, wait a minute. Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren? You can't find one sister nowhere around here in Israel that believes in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to date. And I know what church folks are going to tell me right here. Nope, there ain't nobody in the church. And, and, that, and that is only partially true, which means it's a full lie. Because just because there's nobody in your particular local assembly, you cannot speak for the 34 million apostolics worldwide that there's nobody in, there's nobody in, the church, in God's church nowhere. You just haven't met them yet. If you're single and you're around somebody single, Tell your single neighbor, you haven't met them yet. <laughs> oh, boy. I hope I'm not speaking to somebody who met somebody here recently. And I take that as a prophecy. Well, I guess that's not going to work out. Hey, man, I just, I thought that was the one. And the pastor sitting up here talking about I ain't met him yet. Thank you, Jesus. I hope nobody married turned to anybody and said, you haven't met them yet, because you know that wasn't the Lord. You met them. You are married. You, are, it's, you met there ain't no unmeeting. <laughs> you are met. Thank you, Jesus. Watch it now. He said, the father and mother said, what? You mean you can't see anybody that's sanctified that you like? <clears throat> and the way they asked it, the way they asked it, is there never a woman? It means this is not the first time he saw something that he liked that was not something he should have been looking at. He was where he shouldn't have been looking at something he shouldn't have been looking at, and after you look at it long enough, watch this, you're going to go get it. Whatever you look at long enough, you are going to go after it. I'm going to say it again. Listen to your pastor tonight. Listen online. Whatever you look at long enough, you are going to go after it. So you have to be careful of what you're looking at. You're sitting here all day looking at um, pictures of people. Oh, God. They have pictures. Thirsty Thursdays. Pictures. We're looking at people. Oh, he's handsome. She's pretty. You don't sit up here and look all day. You're looking at handsome men all day with your single self. What do you think is going to happen to you eventually? But Pastor Two playing tonight. Y'all didn't know we knew about these things. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is here to help you. I'm glad you, you just keep in the dark. But for those of you who should not be looking, somebody going to warn you today. You know, you over here on Instagram and you look at, you know, you look at two preaching and five wicked people. So you just put enough preaching in there to say, hey, I looked at something spiritual. <laughs> The next hour and a half, <laughs> trending. <laughs> my video, my Instagram feed is too boring. So my Instagram, for example, I don't even manage my Instagram. We got one precious sister here. She manages my Instagram feed. And so she, she follows who I'm supposed to follow and make sure that my Instagram feed looks right. So when I go on Instagram, all I see is, is people worshiping. <laughs> this preacher, <laughs> this one over here singing, another one over here shouting. Today I got, went on Instagram today, I saw Bell Glade releasing balloons up into the sky. I hear Pastor Otis praying. I said, my God. Well, I felt God just, I mean, the man's praying. I said, thank you, Jesus. I wanted to be out there releasing a balloon. I mean, they had like five different clips of him praying and balloons going up. By the time you're done, you want to go up with the balloon. 
<laughs> That's how my Instagram is looking. I pull up the next Instagram. Sarasota is having their first ladies' tea. I said, look at this. Cake looked good. Sugar I can't eat. But there it was. They looked like they were spiritual. Hallelujah. I was excited. I like, like. Next Instagram feed, here comes California telling me about 66 people that got the Holy Ghost on Sunday in their service. 66. And I'm like, here's Brother Dross. God wants to give you revival. And I'm like, man, come on and give me revival. That's how my Instagram is going. But my flesh would say, hey, I wonder what's going on over in trending. What's trending out here? The devil is a liar. That's Timnath. I can't get no help here. I can't go over to Timnath. Because you go over there to trending, and guess what you're going to be seeing? Something in your Instagram feed that you should not see. Even if you weren't trying to see it, it will catch your eye. Talk to me, somebody. They'll put it in front of you. Am I right? You know, I don't have, I don't have Facebook. They, they, they built a Facebook page for me when I wrote my book, and I was supposed to promote the book on that Facebook page. But I have never posted on Facebook one day in my life. Not one day in my life. Now, I don't have no problem with all y'all that, that post on Facebook. But it's a good thing I don't have Facebook. You want to know why? I want to stay in the spirit. So that when I come to preach and teach here, nobody can say you saw it on Facebook. And that's why you're telling me. Because every now and then somebody will say, Pastor, I'm about to send you something. And they send me something on Facebook. I'm like, Lord. It would be better if I had not known. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Because saints lose their minds on Facebook. Why can, is that a brick spirit I feel rising up? I feel like a spirit of resistance coming on that. So you know I got a pickaxe in the Holy Ghost. I am coming with a bulldozer for you. Your Facebook ought to have enough evidence to convict you of being saved. If you're going to be on Facebook, be on it and be apostolic. People on Facebook should know that your page is the page where if you want to, if you want to get right, come to my page. And if you don't like, if you don't like to be rebuked, don't come to my page because you're going to get a rebuke for sin on my page. Your page needs to, your page needs to be the page that wicked people avoid. They need to look at your phone. You going there? I'm not going over there because they probably going to be over here trying to preach to me. Every day, all they telling me is Acts 2.38, Acts 2.38, Acts 2.38. Repent, 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 repent. What, they ain't got nothing else to talk about? Let that be your page. Let them talk about your page. Their page is so religious. Why are they so religious? They so spiritual. Do they think they're holier than thou? Yes. Go ahead and let them call you holier than thou. Let your page be apostolic. Put Deuteronomy 6 for everywhere. Well, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Put up there, repent, be baptized, every one of every day, every day. Kill him with it. Morning, in the morning, Jesus. In the noonday, Jesus. In the night, Jesus. Got a clip of Bishop preaching. Clip of me saying something. Clip of Sister David. Put a clip of every preaching. Put a clip of prayer. Amen. Just bring it to Saturday morning prayer and just let it stream live. Pray and do something. Just drive the devil insane. But don't put something on your page that takes you away from glorifying God. Because here's what the Bible says. Abstain from the very... You might not even be doing something wrong. But if it looks wrong, you're not glorifying God. Say, so, well, they, why, why are they looking at my page? Stop trolling my page. It's called Facebook. You put it out there for people to troll it. Well, they need not look at my page. No, you need to be apostolic. You need to be a child of God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying a whole word right now. A whole word. Yeah, be apostolic. Your page needs to glorify God. Everything you need to do. Suppose, look at this Fiji bottle of water right here. I love me some Fiji water. How many would agree that water is good for you? 
How many? Amen. Say amen if water is good for you. Water is good for you. H2O. How many would agree that water is better for you than a Coca-Cola? Huh? How many would agree that water is better for you than some sweet, syrupy, sugary drink that's just adding carbs? It's just, it's good for you to drink water. So how many are glad to see pastor drinking more water instead of Coke? Is it drinking water, no Coke? <laughs> I got some, I have some, I have some folks that are like dictators and tyrants around here. As soon as I try to get a Coke Zero, they appear out of nowhere. And they come in and they rebuke me for Coke Zero as if I was drinking, amen, a full-fledged Heineken. So here it is, my, bo my bottle of water, amen, precious sister came in and dropped off some water for me. I got my water, Sister Felita brought water up here, and I get my water, amen. I'm so grateful for my water. Now, now, I'm going to show you how crazy we are, how, some, how hypocritical we are sometimes. Because we'll say stuff like, don't judge me. Don't judge me by my appearance. My appearance doesn't matter. Just judge what's in my heart. Who's, ever, who's heard that? Don't be looking on the outside. It's what's in my heart. Okay. Suppose I came up here one day and I had a Miller Lite bottle. A Heineken bottle. Talk back to me. A wine cooler bottle. Let's take it to the hood. I had a Cisco bottle, a 40-ounce bottle. Oh, you want to be upscale, a Cristal bottle, Moet, Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon bottle. Filled with Fiji water. But you didn't know I had emptied out the liquor and put Fiji water in it. And I came here to Bible study and I was like, all right, saints, turn to Judges. Hold on. Turn, turn to... Uh, Turn to Judges chapter 14. We're going to pick up on Samson. Watch out for that Timnath now. <laughs> Two of y'all would have came up here. I can see these elders now. Some of y'all would have came up here. Matt would have restrained me. Brother Solomon would have with the oil. Elder would have came over here. The Deacon T would have came with the oil. Y'all be coming from every direction. Oh, something done got a hold of pastor. Let's grab him. We need to save our pastor before he dies out here. Kill himself. Kill everybody else. Some of you sisters would have got up and said, the nerve of him. My goodness. I did not come here for all of that demonstration of nastiness, the blood, and walked out. And just the same people. Hmm? Am I right? Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I just... You don't care if you're a lawyer. If your Lord, if you were driving through the streets of Tampa and you passed by the neighborhood bar and your attorney, his vehicle was parked at the bar and you saw him walking out of the bar, you'd be like, look at, man, that's, that's my lawyer. Boy, I tell you, he's so crazy. Yeah, look at him. Look like he's stumbling. He better have a designated driver. That's not good. That's probably what the most you would say. Did you hear what I just said? That's the most you would say. But if you saw me coming out of that bar with your spiritual self, first of all, you would slow down. You'd wind your window down. Reverend, is that? Pa that's not you, is it, Pastor? Please tell me you were in there doing a Bible study because I, I don't even see your Bible. Where, where? Talk to me, somebody. You would have a problem with it because character matters. Isn't that right? Character matters. I can't preach upstairs and live downstairs. I can't tell you to stay away from the bar and I'm out here struggling, falling out the bar. If you pulled up beside me and you saw me puffing on a black and mild cigarette, puffing on a cigar like Andrew Tate, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Y'all be like, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Some of you wouldn't even say nothing. You wouldn't even stop to talk. You'd be just like, mm, mm, mm. I knew I felt something. <laughs> I knew he was a hypocrite. The Lord done exposed that thing. Some of you would have pulled your phone out and go click, click, mm. and send it on your little Instagram feed later. Who is this? Juxtaposed with a picture of me preaching. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. 
Because you would expose that hypocrisy. Look at him. Look at him pulling on that cigar. Look at him. Look at him blowing O's. Look at him. Yeah. Why? Because you have to abstain from the very appearance of evil. The same standard then that's applied to me is applied to every child of God in here. Because guess what? You are saints of the most high God. And God is holding you to a high standard. Not just the preacher. It's not just the preacher that's trying to go to heaven, y'all. Look at your neighbor and say, church is not an extracurricular activity. Tell them. Church is not just something we do on the weekends. Listen to the preacher. It's not just, I just, I just act holy on Sunday in between 11 and 1. Live like the devil later on. Monday, well, I might be going to Bible study. I might do all right there. But Tuesday, oh, deuce is wild. We're going, we going for it. Mm. Tim now saw a woman want to, and wants to get every, here's the thing about sin have you noticed that sin doesn't like to be alone sin wants to involve as many people as I can get to join with me in my foolishness I'm going to do it are you hearing the preacher Yeah. go get her wife they said, man, please. All right, listen. Watch out for things that captivate your attention that you know lead you away from God. Every distraction that leads you away from your destiny, you need to rebuke it. Don't be distracted by anything or anyone that leads you away from Christ. You should spend your time getting closer to Jesus. If something or someone is making you spend less time with Jesus, get away from it. If something or someone is leading you away from Jesus, get away from it. But if something is making you get closer to Jesus, that's what you need to connect with. Are you with me here? That means if you have a friend that makes you more carnal, you need to back away from that friend. If you're in a relationship that makes you more carnal, you need to get out of that relationship. If you have entertainment that is making you more carnal, you need to get away from that entertainment. If your favorite sitcom is making you more carnal, you need to stop watching that foolishness. Your favorite Netflix, your favorite Amazon feature is making you more carnal than it is of the devil. It is not of God. Get away from it. Oh, this is rough teaching here tonight. But the teaching that I'm giving, the words I'm speaking to you tonight, they are spirit and they are life. We are letting devils into our house. We got demons sitting in our room. From what? Off of your screens. Thank you, Jesus. It's hard to praise if, if I got demons sitting on my hand. I'm trying to lift my left hand up, but... I'm letting the enemy into my life with my choices for distraction. Timnath is where I'm spending too much time over here. Whatever you're looking at, you're looking at all these Lifetime movies, romance movies. Okay, we're going to watch 10 Lifetime movies. We single. We up in here. Don't you know, by the time you are movie number three, talking about you having a movie marathon, you will be more lonely at one than you were at nine. I wish y'all wouldn't leave me out here. I wish there was like at least four or five of y'all that would just drown out the silence and just shout hallelujah and just say, and just say anybody want to be quiet, they can be quiet, but we're going to say it's the truth. Amen. We're up here, we're watching this beautiful romance movie. We, we up here, we deep off in romance. I'm falling more in love with the idea of love every minute of this film. I have no one, I have nobody in my life, but this film is making me more miserable. And I can't wait to see the next scene. No, girl, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, he going to break your heart, girl. That's not the one. It's the other one that loves you. Leave him. Go with him. Where you at? They done played five love songs as this show is going on. All songs that the Lord delivered you from five years ago. These songs have brought you right back to where your mind doesn't need to be.
Help us, Jesus. I'm trying to, what you need to do is shut off that foolishness. Did you hear what I just said? Listen to the preacher. Shut off that foolishness and put you on a worship song. Plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. Say, God, I don't want no Ishmael's. I want my Isaac. So I'm going to stay with you till Isaac shows up. And brothers, I don't even have to tell you because men are visually stimulated. Women are stimulated by what they hear. Men are stimulated by what they see. So with men, what you see is extremely important. You need to, you need to shut down everything that is taking you away from serving the one true God. One of the biggest problems we're having in church today is pornography. Today. In church. Because it's a secret sin. David said, cleanse me from secret faults. And our phones have made it more secret than ever. And it will oppress you. Because the thing about sin is this. If you know you're in sin, you got too much God in you to enjoy the sin. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. But you got too much sin in you to enjoy God. So now there's a tug of war. Talk to me, somebody. Between spirit and flesh. And if you let the flesh win, you Plunge yourself further into depression. Timnath. Dangerous place. Messing with Philistines. I'm going to leave you with this to think about tonight and I'm done. And you, well, you already closed your Bible, beloved. We in Judges 14. But I want to you know. He says, go get her for me. The parents said, is there anybody else? There's never anybody else that you want. Any, there's nothing righteous that you want. You can never be attracted. Watch out for it when you're not attracted to spiritual things. If, if, if the preaching bores you, something is wrong with you, not the preaching. If church is boring for you now, something is wrong with you, not the church. Did you hear what I just said? If you're turned off by the worship, it is not the worship that is off. It is you. Because your appetite is open for something that the church can't provide. You want something exotic. Can't get no help. <laughs> boring. Samson like, these girls around here boring. Look at them. They too holy. I need something exotic. Get her for me. Read. Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren mm. or among all my people mm. that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? You want a wicked. Go ahead. And Samson said unto his father, yep. get her for me. What a, for what a petulant, spoiled child. I want her. <laughs> I want her, I want her, I want her, I want her. Get her from me. I want her. Man, baby. Isn't that just like us? That's how we pray. I want it, but Jesus, I want it. God said it's bad for you. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. Okay. Okay. Read. Get her for me. Yep. For she pleaseth she me She pleaseth well. me. Just because it's good to you doesn't mean it's good for you. So what if it pleases you? If it's pleasing your flesh, doesn't mean that God is. Now, here's the dangerous part. This is where it gets dangerous. It gets more dangerous. Read. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the his Lord. His father and his mother didn't even know it was. A, it was the Lord that was letting him say this. Because God was going to use it to destroy the Philistines. But the point I'm getting ready to make here is this. You are in trouble when God even lets your carnality work out his will. You in trouble when God said, all right, I'm going to let you have your flesh. I'm going to still do what I want to do. But you, you know, I'm going to destroy you in the process too. Stand to your feet. Boy, I got to stop. Boy, we, don't have, we don't have time tonight to get myself in trouble. I'm already in trouble tonight. But it's good trouble. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, stay away from the Philistines. Do not entertain Philistines. Do not date Philistines. Do not hang out with Philistines. Do not spend an inordinate amount of time with Philistines. The only thing you do with Philistines is invite Philistines to church. Because God is able to make a Philistine into an Israelite. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Apart from that, mm, unless God does a change of nature, God doesn't want you to marry a Philistine. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Said.
He said, Lord, well, what, Pastor, what if I'm already married to a Philistine? Well, First Timothy, First Peter chapter 3 says, act right, and God will sanctify that Philistine. God will change them. Act right, not just talk right. Because if you talk right and act wrong, you cannot witness. There's some folks that don't come to church with you because they saw your attitude last week. So why they don't come to church when I inv invite them? Well, maybe, you know, if you hadn't have told off your boss with all those nice words. <laughs> and then turn around and give him a church card. <laughs> I mean, something's wrong. Y'all better hear this preacher today. Look at your neighbor and said, stay away from Philistines. Whew, thank you, Jesus. How many in here said, I, I just want to stay. I want, I want to be in God's will. I don't want... I don't want to connect with anything that doesn't please God. I don't want any soul ties. I don't want my soul to be tied up, connected to, locked up, wrapped up with anything that doesn't please God. I want to be like the Lord, not pleasing my flesh, but pleasing him. Amen. Go beside somebody if you can. I want you to take somebody by the hand or put, put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Amen. There's always a need for us to connect. There's always a need for us to connect with somebody. Somebody needs the strength that you have. Somebody sometimes just needs another person that can encourage them. And you don't know what your neighbor is going through. You don't know what they've been through. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know what they're facing. You don't know what they're dealing with. But there is a God who is able to address that need tonight. Amen. So would you pray for them? I want you to do me a favor. Lift your voice. Pray for them just like you'd want them to pray for you for just a moment. Father, we thank you. Lord Jesus Christ, for these precious saints of God. Lord God, you've given us your scripture as a warning. Lord God, you're trying to warn us against our own flesh. You're trying to warn us against the things, Lord God Almighty, that tempt us. The things that our flesh desire. The carnal things, Lord God Almighty, that our flesh wants. Help us to overcome our flesh, Lord Jesus. Help us to walk uprightly. Help us to live for you. Help us to do the things that please you. Lord God, we know that our flesh is not, is not righteous. In our flesh, there is no good thing. But Lord Jesus, we know that we can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And that you'll give us grace, Lord God, so that we can stand, Lord Jesus, that you'll give us the whole armor of God, Lord Jesus, that we can withstand the devil and having done all, Lord Jesus, will be able to stand. Help us, Lord God Almighty. Help us to walk uprightly before you, creating us a clean heart, Lord God. Renew a right spirit within us. Somebody feels hopeless tonight because they felt like they've already messed up. But I pray that tonight, Lord God, that you'd forgive. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd restore. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd give them another chance that they'll overcome the devil on every side. Help us, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, lay a nail-scarred hand on our, on our heads. Help us, Lord God, and cover us under the blood help us lord jesus to overcome our desires help us lord jesus amen to stay close to you lord god to be spiritually sensitive father we give you the glory tonight we give you the honor tonight we give you the praise tonight lord god almighty thank you for the deliverance and the salvation and the forgiveness lord god that you're giving to your people tonight have your way lord jesus get the glory get the honor get the praise in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ somebody loose those hands and clap them unto the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you tonight. If you're in the building and you've never been baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and you know that your soul is important, you want to go to heaven, I want you to know that you can't go to heaven without repentance from sin. Baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. You can get it tonight. The water is ready right now. We've got robes. We've got towels. You can get baptized in water in the name of Jesus. What's the purpose? To remove all your sins. You can get it tonight. Praise God. For those of you who have to go, please remember we've got food, free food for you here. We want you to fellowship over in the fellowship hall. Amen. We've got our ushers in the back. I want you to do what you've been doing every Monday night. Ask the Lord, what should I give tonight? Amen. And whatever the Lord lays on your heart, that's what I want you to give. Amen. But everybody, please give in that offering tonight. God wants to bless you for it. We use it for our missions work, and you can give online at urinlt.com forward slash give. Amen. Or you can use the kiosk. God bless you. Amen. Greet somebody in Jesus' name. Just don't talk to people you know. Hug somebody you don't know. Tell them you love them. God bless